Bolivia is a wild and vibrant place that leaves no one indifferent. The remote stretches of rainforest and the rugged orography of the Andean highlands offer a canvas where people and cultures blend with luxuriant nature. Friendly and cheerful people are one of the country's most precious assets and the true driving force behind such an amazing Bolivia. Spanish herpetologists Juan Timms and Jairo Cuevas have come to Bolivia in search of the most venomous snakes in this indomitable land. They will travel across the high plateau and descend into the remotest jungles collecting data on the snakes that inhabit this savage territory. To achieve their goal, they must capture a great number of specimens of different species. But without question, the greatest challenge of the expedition will be to locate and describe a new species unknown to science. A large viper of which, to date, they've only seen a single photograph. The expedition begins in a remote region located on the eastern slope of the Andes, a vast extension of unexplored territory where the great mountain range silently displays its unruly domain. This is where their friend Berti and his unique family have lived for many years. Berti's house is located in the perfect habitat for snakes, away from neighboring villages and several kilometers from the nearest road. It is no doubt the ideal place to set up the base camp. On Berti's advice, they will attend a community service in Bella Vista, a remote village where all the local peasants are gathering to participate. The Minga, as the locals call it, is a deeply rooted custom in South American rural environments, where all the members of the community engage in a selfless cooperation to help one of their neighbors with some type of field work. Today's Minga has brought together over 30 neighbors to clear this plot of land, which the owner wishes to turn into pasture for his cattle. Estamos aquí en la localidad de Bellavista, que hemos venido a acompañar a un grupo de campesinos que han venido a trabajar en una minga. Ellos lo llaman minga y es un trabajo comunal. Me acaba de decir el, el hombre de allá abajo que si ven alguna la van a ver arriba, porque resulta que abajo con tanto ganado y el, y el ruido de la maquinaria de los animales se espantan. Le he preguntado y me ha dicho que si vemos vemos una chuta. Awaiting any signal, they will remain close to the strip where the workers are doing the clearing, ready and alert. Not even an hour has passed since their arrival when the first snake appears. It's a Mato Grosso landshead a dangerous snake that is greatly feared by the locals. This specimen is an adult male and fully capable of delivering a deadly bite. Esto es nombre común se conoce como víbora del Mato Grosso, porque esta es muy común en Brasil. La zona de Mato Grosso, en el Pantanal. Más aire esa que cualquier otra. Esta es la más común aquí. Y cuando muerde, aprieta las bolsas y inyecta el veneno. Pero si hemos sabido ver más gruesas. Esas son las hembras. Ah, ¿Cuáles son las hembras? Las que son más grandes, más gruesas. Las gruesas. Si, hay, si hay unas así, hay como este palo, una sola así. Sí. Una. O a lo mejor son otra clase, otra especie. Esa que acabé, pero ya. Sí. Así como esta. Que acabé, sí. 
Now the peasants are absolutely fascinated watching someone handle such a dangerous animal in this manner. They would all have normally killed this snake without hesitation. But today, the two herpetologists have come to an agreement with them to capture all the snakes that are found during the Minga to study them and then release them far away. The triangular markings on the Mato Grosso lancehead's body reflect the typical pattern found on most neotropical pit vipers. This pattern is the result of an adaptive evolution that provides the perfect camouflage among the leaf litter. Recent studies on the composition of the venom of the Mato Grosso lancehead have revealed that it contains an enzyme which could be used against tumor cells and other ailments. The use of snake venom in medicine is nothing new. In fact, an increasing number of medications containing venom from certain species are regularly used to treat thrombosis, heart disease, and blood coagulation disorders. As part of the tradition, the family organizing the Minga takes care of all the logistics involved in an event of this kind. The landowners tirelessly devote themselves to making sure there's enough food and drink for everyone. Later in the evening, when the work has been finished, they will throw a party at their home with plenty of dinner and dancing. It's a joyful celebration that will surely last well into the early hours of the morning. <laughs> There is no time for lunch to settle. The clearing work cannot wait and will offer no breaks. Neither will the snakes. <laughs> it's another Mato Grosso lancehead. This time they found it sheltered in a small cave covered by dense vegetation. Juan will now try to bring it out of the cave with his hook, being particularly careful so that it does not slip away into the undergrowth. While holding it by the tail, it is of utmost importance not to lose sight of the snake's head at any time. It could turn in the blink of an eye and bite the hand holding it. Now they need to immobilize it by holding it by the head. But the viper is very fast, and as soon as it touches the ground, it shoots off downhill. When the head is held tight, the viper's deadly poison spears become nullified. Its vibrating tail indicates the snake is nervous and stressed. However, this moment of stress will lead to safe passage to survival, as without Juan and Jairo's propitious intervention, this formidable animal would certainly have been condemned to death. The Mato Grosso lancehead is the most common snake in this part of Bolivia. It is also found across Paraguay and the Brazilian Pantanal in both of the states of Mato Grosso.
This species causes a large number of snake bite accidents here in Bolivia. This is mostly due to its extraordinary ability to adapt to human altered environments. One very unusual species that inhabits the rich Amazon rainforest in Bolivia is the rare speckled forest pit viper. This semi-arboreal species hunts its prey coiled among the vegetation, laying in wait. And rodents are its primary prey. The extremely long fangs inject venom deep within, reaching the vital organs of a prey of such modest size. The effect is immediate and devastating. In just a few seconds, the mouse lies motionless, dead. Using its flickering tongue, the snake detects the scent left behind by the mouse during its erratic escape. And that trace will unmistakably guide it to the rodent's inert body. This male speckled forest pit viper has probably been fasting for several months. During all that time, he may have been following the trail of one or more females with the intention of mating. Their eagerness to spread their genes is so great that the males completely lose their appetite. Their stomachs literally become sealed to the point that in their compelling need to reproduce, some specimens die of starvation. but such a fate will not become of this male. His future descendants are presumably already developing inside a female's venter. And his own survival is ensured with the intake of this first prey. Bueno, okay. Vamos o no? Vámonos. Berti, Hola. que te pegan las sábanas, ¿sí? <risa> uh, joder. Breakfast is served at Berti's home at around 7 in the morning. It is essential to start the day off with a full stomach. Llenos un poco de té. Venga, sí. Andale. The daily outings in the jungle are getting longer, and they will probably not have another bite to eat until late afternoon, when they conclude their search for snakes in the Palmar. Berti shares the house with his two uncles, the only ones in the family who did not migrate to the city. He, on the other hand, left the city to live here with them and lend a hand with the farm work. Now he wouldn't give up this way of life for anything in the world. <laughs> Pasabais un pato uh -huh. en el horno. También hicimos dos. Para mi cumpleaños y para el de él. Bueno, vamos a ver qué anda haciendo Mingo. Uh -huh. Nos vamos. Y nos vamos. Today, they plan to set up camp at the very top of the palm forest, together with the palm cutters. It is an isolated location surrounded by dense rainforest more than four hours away from the nearest road. <laughs> In this inhospitable and treacherous jungle, the palm cutter's camp is the closest thing to something resembling a home. Apart from the obvious lack of comfort, one can also perceive a unique fellowship amongst those who stay here at the camp. The kind of bond that arises when men come together to confront wild nature. 
Hora de trabajar, ¿no? Sí, hora de trabajar, ya desayunamos ya, ya. a trabajar ahora. Está con un poco de sabor. Un poco, sabor. ¿Ya falta? Ya está, ya. ¿Pero no has echado condimento? Tiene. Yo le eché ya, ahorita. For several weeks, they will live together with the palm cutters, partaking in all the daily duties of the camp, such as cooking, fetching water, and gathering firewood. These men come to the palm forest every year in the early spring. Their job is to collect the palm leaves that will later be sold in cities like La Paz, Santa Cruz, and Cochabamba. Traditionally, people hang them from balconies and verandas during Palm Sunday at Easter. They go through the entire palm forest thoroughly, covering every inch of the ground making sure that not a single palm leaf is left uncut. But sooner or later, they will inevitably come face to face with a viper coiled at the base of a palm tree. When this happens, the palm cutter will invariably dispatch the snake using his machete. Indeed, there's a high risk of being bitten by a viper while working among dense vegetation. So every year, a large number of snakes are killed during the palm campaign. But this time, the presence of these two Spanish herpetologists will hopefully alter this grim routine. Palm cutters have happily agreed to call upon them whenever they find a snake. So if this cooperation works as planned, the chances of finding the new species will considerably increase. The palm forest evokes an enchanted place, and even more so when it is covered in fog. Here, the climate conditions are unique. The jungle becomes denser and more humid. If there is any unknown species out there, this would be where it dwells. Juan has found a viper. It is the first snake they've seen in the last three days, and therefore the capture is truly exciting. At first glance, Juan misidentifies it for another similar species, also found along the Amazon versant of the Andes. Botrocophias microphthalmus o andianus, eh? O Botrocophias andianus. Estoy viendo que tiene una marca blanca. Esto es un andianus. Es andianus, macho. Mira. It is a juvenile Andean pit viper, an extremely rare species of which hardly any records exist. Y luego las marcas dorsales es de andianus también. Un Botrocophias andianus. As the days go by, the number of snake catches has steadily increased. This time they have found what appears to be an adult Andean pit viper. This could certainly be the largest possible size for this species.
está moviendo la cola, mira. Sí, sí. Con una foto, ¿no? Y la soltamos. Sí, tiene un machetazo ahí, ¿eh? Sí. Esta ha sobrevivido ya a un palmero. Despite its imposing appearance, the Andean pit viper is an even-tempered animal that rarely tries to bite. Nevertheless, this snake instills great fear among the peasants who inhabit these forests. And there is good reason for their fear. This viper's venom is extremely toxic. It can cause severe necrosis, often resulting in the amputation of the affected limb. Moreover, no specific antivenom is available for this group of vipers, and the antivenoms used for other species are not fully effective. There are very few sighting records for this species, and hardly any studies have been done concerning its biology or the state of current populations. The distribution of this viper is restricted to the submontane and montane forests of the Amazonian slope of the Andes in Bolivia and Peru, and it is considered rare. However, here in the palm forest, it is by far the most abundant species. The last meal of the day is always the best tasting. At this time, when there is no hurry to move forward with the work, only rest and replenishment lie ahead. Today the workers have stayed at the camp to prepare the palm leaves they've been cutting over the last few days. They gather the leaves in bundles of a hundred stems each. Each bundle will weigh between 20 and 30 kilograms. How they arrange the palm leaves is important. The tender part of the stem should be positioned inward so that it is protected and will last longer without drying. This way the leaves will still be fresh when they arrive at their destination. The palm cutters sell each bundle at a price that ranges from 150 to 300 bolivianos, which is the equivalent of 20 to 40 dollars. After a week of intensively searching in the palm forest, they leave without having found a single specimen of the new species. A change of scenery will do well and will give them the opportunity to get to know the Bolivian highlands and the fabulous Salar de Ujuni. Next, they will cross the mesothermic Andean valleys along a tricky downhill road that will take them to the warm and pleasant lowlands of Santa Cruz. These winding roads, on which people and goods are constantly moving, comprise the country's veins and arteries and connect the larger cities to the remote and inaccessible regions.
Now they find themselves in a secluded region where two very different types of habitat converge, the Bolivian Chaco and the Amazon rainforest. Preserving the natural environment and the species that inhabit it has become an important endeavor for numerous associations and non-governmental organizations. This is the case of the natural reserve they will visit upon their next stop, a private initiative through which people of various nationalities have acquired adjacent plots of intact land to form the natural reserve of Potrerillos. Over the years, this place has become a privileged destination for students and biologists from around the world. Entonces, Tony, aquí nuevamente vienen estudiantes y biólogos a estudiar la fauna de aquí, de esta zona. Sí, mayormente sí. Últimamente hemos tenido bastante gente que estudia insectos. Ajá. Entomólogos. Entomólogos, sí. Entomólogos. Pero aquí igualmente viene gente a estudiar los pájaros, sí, reptiles, sí, sí, anfibios. Sí, anfibios. Sí. ¿Qué superficie de bosque hay aquí? Total son 1.500 hectáreas. Ajá. Potrerillo, que es la zona que controlamos nosotros son 400 hectáreas. Sí. Después hay cosas pequeñas, más pequeñas, 14 hectáreas, 100 hectáreas, 140 hectáreas, 40 hectáreas, pero junto a todo logramos los 1500 hectáreas. Claro, y está todo unido. Está todo unido, sí. Años atrás hacíais eh, estaciones de veneno de sí. serpientes sí. para venderlo a Argentina. La producción de veneno era para venderlo a quien lo compra. Years ago, Tony sold Bushmaster's venom that was used to make homeopathic products. El comprador me encontró a mí trámite internet. Él vino aquí, encontró el criadero, se fijó que eran la crisis muta, y ahí me pidió veneno. If there is one snake that instills fear and arouses fascination among the inhabitants of the South American continent more than any other, it would be the unspeakable Bushmaster. Its scientific name, Lachesis Muta, refers to one of the three goddesses who determined the fate of men in Greek mythology. Lachesis was the one who cut the thread of life. This colossal denizen of the Amazon rainforest exceeds three meters in length, meaning it's the largest venomous snake in the Americas. The Bushmaster is also the only American pit viper that lays eggs and incubates them, guarding the clutch until the young are born. If someone or something comes too close, it will vibrate its tail energetically against the leaf litter. It's a warning for the intruder to stay away. Otherwise, she will deliver a killing strike. A bite from this snake has serious consequences that can lead to a fatal outcome. It is by no means coincidence that it's able to inoculate a large amount of venom with its huge fangs, almost three centimeters long. This emblematic creature is, by its own right, the Bushmaster. Today, at the palm forest, the workers will be bringing down the palm bundles to the lower part of the valley. Donkeys are readily the best choice to carry out this unrewarding task, as no motorized vehicle could possibly pass through the narrow trail descending down to the main track. The value of donkeys and horses rise during palm cutting season because the few animals that are available cannot cope with the huge amount of work. The rest of the year, however, all other field work is now done with machinery, and only rarely do they need the help of these courageous animals. Ya lo mismo, chavalita. Ya, arrollale, lo mismo es. 
Ya cargamos los la otra hora y me voy. Last year it rained abundantly throughout this region, and the trail to the palm forest became almost impassable. The willful donkeys sank to their knees in the mud and could only descend when carrying half the weight. But this year, there's been a significant lack of rain, and the trail is in good condition for the descent. Any worker who goes down the trail always carries a palm bundle on his shoulder, sometimes even two. Time passes quickly, and it is essential for all palm leaves to reach the city on schedule. People work hard out here in the countryside, often in precarious conditions and enduring terrible calamities. But despite this, they never stop smiling. Even though we are at the end of the rainy season, at times a thick blanket of clouds covers the towering ridges surrounding the palm forest, and a downpour unexpectedly occurs. Life comes to a halt for a few endless hours. Yet when the flood finally ends, the forest comes back to life with renewed strength and splendor. The increase in humidity in the environment in the tropical regions during the rainy season favors an extraordinary eclosion of reptiles and amphibians. Suddenly the jungle is filled with tiny creatures beaming with life. Although most of them will not survive for very long, because their birth coincides with that of the most implacable predators, the vipers. Most viper species give birth to live young in what is known as ovoviviparous reproduction. Newborns come into existence surrounded by an albumin sac a soft, viscous egg from which they hatch the moment of birth. An outer shell is not necessary with this type of egg, since the entire incubation process is carried out within the mother's own womb. This Brazil's lance head will deliver 10 to 15 young during labor lasting several hours. More than half of the offspring will be females, and the remainder, males. Soon, the young will detach from the cozy gelatinous sacs in which they've been growing for the last seven months. By this time, all of the nutrients contained in the yolk sac have been readily absorbed. So, from here on, they must hunt and feed by themselves. Vipers are born with a perfectly developed venomous apparatus, and their venom can be even more potent than that of their progenitors. The venom composition varies in neonates compared to the adult specimens depending on the type of prey they will feed on during their initial stages in life. Newborn vipers feed on small ectothermal prey, such as lizards and frogs, which require certain venom toxins not present in the venom of adult specimens that feed mainly on endothermal prey, such as rodents. Eventually, the venom of these small vipers will undergo an ontogenetic change as they age and grow larger. For now, they will stay coiled among the leaf litter, waiting in ambush for their first prey. Their stay in the highlands has ended, 
And at the camp, most of the palm cutters have ended their seasonal work and have returned home with their families. They have hardly any food left, but they're holding up with coffee and some loaves of bread left by the workers. The accumulation of fatigue and their poor diet is clearly taking its toll. After four weeks in the palm forest, they're on the verge of exhaustion. But they are determined to go on with the expedition and the hope of finding a specimen of the mysterious new species is still intact. Now they venture into the jungle every night to explore the northern side of the palm forest, an area where several workers claim to have, on occasion, seen or killed this rare species that they seek. During the daytime, they explore a different site, a place they have heard is inhabited by the fearsome rattlesnake. A menos de un metro de la senda, ¿eh? Sí. Por aquí pasa todos los días gente con palma. ¿Sí? Tomando el sol, ¿ves que es justo la parte que entra? Calentándose. Eso está caliente ya, ¿eh? Sí, sí. De hecho, en cuanto que ve que te acercas un poco más... Ya está avisando. Lo malo de, que, de avisar... Es que el campesino que pase por aquí la oye, Eso. la ve y machetazo. Esta situación de la serpiente justo al lado de la senda tiene dos desenlaces posibles. Uno es mordedura en el pie de un campesino o muerte del animal. Y en el 99% de los casos, muerte el animal. Muerte el animal. Hombre, es difícil que ese animal te muerda. Tienes que pisar justo al lado. Pero fíjate lo cerca que estamos y no se, no se ha lanzado todavía. No. Está a puntito, ¿eh? The tropical rattlesnake is unquestionably the most repudiated snake on the South American continent. The subspecies that inhabits Bolivia receives a sinister name. Terrificus, a clear allusion to the enormous annihilating capability of its venom. Only when cornered will it confront an adversary, and always before launching an attack, it will warn insistently with the unmistakable sound of its rattle. It is the most widespread venomous snake in all of South America. Except in Chile and Ecuador, this fearsome creature is distributed throughout all the countries on the continent. Despite the bad reputation that these snakes have, the truth is that they prefer to move away rather than use their venom unnecessarily. The venom of the tropical rattlesnake is very different from the rest of its peers. It contains a neurotoxic component that affects the nervous system and a myotoxic component that destroys muscle fibers. 
This combination of toxins makes it a particularly dangerous snake, which is greatly feared in most parts of South America. But the Terrificus subspecies raises venom toxicity to an extreme. Besides this cocktail of powerful toxins, its venom contains yet another specific component that produces serious alterations in blood clotting, often causing a fatal outcome. No parece que quiera morder de todas maneras, ¿eh? No. Está a punto de todas maneras. Sí, sí, está ya. Está bastante encendida ya, ¿eh? Una mosquita, ojo. Pero si quisiera nos habría mordido ya. Sí, hierba, ¿eh? <risa> Fortunately, for this formidable rattlesnake specimen, nobody has walked along the path today. Otherwise, it would have been killed without hesitation. Now, the only thing they can do for this snake is move it away from the trail and release it into the forest. This way they can make sure that nobody will stumble upon it. At least not today. It has been a long and hot day, and it is already coming to an end. Yet it is far from over. They have been going through this dreadful jungle for almost a month now, and there are lesser and lesser opportunities of finding the new species. Esta zona es buena, sí. Now, in the tense stillness of the night, is when all the elements are working in their favor. Jairo has seen something. It's a viper, and it seems to be different. Joder, Jairo, sí, bien, macho. Bien, bien, bien. Ah, toma. Por fin. Es un macho, ¿no? Sí, es un macho. This is a moment of great satisfaction for both of them. Against all odds, during the final stages of this expedition, and after two years of dedicated searching, they have finally managed to find the enigmatic new species. Nada, macho, por fin. Por fin, Jairo. Joder, qué alegría, macho. Joder. Tenemos un macho adulto. Bueno, tenemos que hacerle ahora. Hay que hacer el recuento de escamas. Recuento de escamas y primero. Y luego ya. Hacerle foto. This is the first time that a living specimen of this mysterious serpent has been recorded on film. It is indeed a rare and scarce species. Having discovered this new species is undoubtedly an important finding in the field of herpetology, but above all, it brings immense personal satisfaction to both of them. Joder, grandecita, eh? Sí. Primer ejemplar vivo de esta especie. <laughs> sí, señor. Colmillacos tiene, eh? Sí, macho. Eso está poniendo... Vamos a ¿Está poniendo nerviosa? Sí. Vamos a guardarla, venga. Sí. This snake is a species unknown to science. It has not yet been described, nor has it been given a name. 
The discovery of an animal species of relevance, as is the case of this large pit viper, is quite uncommon nowadays. However, new species of vertebrates are steadily being discovered around the world each year, which goes to show that there are still regions of our planet that harbor enormous biodiversity and have not yet been adequately explored. For this reason, it is essential to classify all the species that make up our planet's flora and fauna in order to preserve ecosystems and regulate the ongoing alteration of the natural environment caused by the direct action of man. After spending over a month in the palm forest, they can now say that this intense expedition has successfully concluded. There is no one left at the camp. All the workers have been gone for days now. Although Berti's dog, Cachupina, stayed behind to take care of the camp and has been a dear companion these last few days. Now all they have to do is dismantle their tents and get their backpacks ready before walking all the way down to Berti's house. But first, they must release all the vipers captured over the last few days. For this purpose, they have moved away from all areas related to palm activity, thus avoiding any future possible encounters. A great number of snakes are killed each year during the palm season. Yet despite this, the number of specimens does not appear to be declining. This is most certainly because it is a short season, of little more than a month. So the viper populations have enough time to recover during the remaining months when the palm forest is left alone, serene and unchanging. There could be no better way to conclude this memorable trip other than playing a football match with all the friends who they have spent time with in the palm forest. This practice clearly illustrates the old style comradeship, something which is still very valid in this part of the world. In spite of the accumulated fatigue after an endless week of arduous work, just like every Saturday evening, they will play until nightfall. <laughs> <laughs> 